I was assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator. I was drunk in a hotel room with other people around me when it happened. There was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone. I was scared and I felt sick. I eventually had to stand up after many minutes for it to stop. Sexual assault is no laughing matter. And frankly speaking, what you just heard is a very terrible, terrible thing to happen to anyone. But you're probably wondering, what happened? And how did this happen? This is Katie Bugs. She's a well-known and relatively big Twitch streamer. She came out with allegations about someone basically assaulting her, and she left out their name. Now, again, this is a terrible situation to ever be assaulted in any manner, but the fact that she doesn't drop a name is a little concerning to me. But before I go ahead and even give my opinions on the matter, let's just take a look. Last year, at the beginning of summer, I was assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator. I was freshly 18, and had just graduated high school a few weeks prior. I was drunk in a hotel room with other people around me when it happened. He was someone I had once watched, and he was eight years older than me and far more powerful. There was more alcohol in the room, and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking and insisted on drinking games, and already drunk, I obviously completely complied. We sat on the couch and answered questions about each other, drinking a bunch, and the older guy sat right next to me while playing. I confused my nerves for excitement, as I'd never been around such a big creator before. I remember getting drunker and drunker and really tired around this time. It was about 3 a.m. Right before the incident, I had answered a question about my age. We were playing a drinking game and talking about sex, and I admitted to everyone in the room that I was 18 and that I was a virgin at the time. It was a little after that when I had resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no, still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people, the fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend, and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. He made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the phone game I was playing. I was scared and I felt sick, either from the alcohol or from his touch. It didn't matter because my mind was a blur. I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. I eventually had to stand up after many minutes for it to stop. <laughs> the night lasted until 6 a.m. I was still drunk, either from alcohol or tiredness. I went to leave, and the older guy decided to leave with me. We walked to the elevators, where I didn't get on. He then pretended that the elevator was broken, and that he couldn't leave, telling me to get in the elevator to prove it was broken. And then after a few minutes, he ended the night with a, guess I'm going now, leaving with a wounded puppy look. He proceeded to Instagram message me for a bit after that, simple flirting or asking about the con next convention I was going to, saying stuff about seeing me there. Simple messages ultimately filtered into nothing. At the time of it all, I convinced myself I was lucky. I was lucky that that had happened to me. I was excited to be around such big creators, to be at that convention in general. I figured that's just how things were, that that was the price I had to pay to be there, that anyone would have loved to be in my position and that I should have appreciated it. Now, here's the thing. Everything that she went ahead and talked about, we can go ahead and boil it down into these couple of points. Her age, drinking in a hotel room with others, being offered alcohol at the age of 18, playing a phone game in the middle of a drinking game, and people, including her friends, watched her get touched and they did not say anything. How? Something interesting just happened. George Not Found just came out with a video talking about the entire situation and confirming that he is the one that is being accused in this entire situation. So I have now went ahead and included him and his side in this entire video. Now, Katie Bugs' entire story, I frankly have an issue with. And frankly speaking, it doesn't make any sense. And as for George, not only does his story have very problematic points, but he isn't innocent. Let's start with her age. Now, Katie claims that she just freshly turned 18 and i do believe that but how are people allowing her to drink right before the incident i had answered a question about my age we were playing a drinking game and talking about sex and i admitted to everyone in the room that i was 18 and that i was a virgin 
at the time. So why does this matter? Actually, I think she's lying about when she told people when she was 18. Here's the reason why. The event in question is VidCon. VidCon is very, very strict about your ID and your age. From many content creators I've seen go there, they have said the same sentiment that I'm saying right now. That means during the entire time she was at VidCon, including in the hotels, she could not have been telling the truth about her age. In fact, it had to have happened after. And that was my first hint as to why I doubted her story. So funny enough, George Not Found does confirm my suspicion on this and he does go ahead and confirm. Yeah, the only time he knew about her age was at VidCon and she did lie about her age during VidCon, meaning her timeline of events is not correct at all. Here, let me show you the clips. It was actually around this point after the after VidCon had finished and we were messaging that I found out her age. And then we essentially just were playing drinking games in the hotel room. We were just having fun, talking with each other, nothing crazy in particular. Now, one thing Casey said retrospectively, looking back at the scenario, is that I was flirting with her throughout the night and that she was uncomfortable with this because of our age difference. At the time, she was 18 and I was 26. She actually assumed I didn't know her age because she had never said it. But then later, I had actually DM'd her on Instagram. And because of this, she says that it is confirmed that I know her age. To give some context to this scenario and to why I didn't know her age, my perspective of things is that I am with people that are over the age of 21 in a scenario where we are doing things that people that are over the age of 21 are doing, like drinking. And also the people that came, came from an event where they had very heavy security. This was an official VidCon after party. And with previous VidCon after parties, I even had problems getting into these events. There was one time where they didn't let me in because they couldn't confirm the legitimacy of my UK ID. They said they weren't trained to look at foreign IDs. So they didn't even let me in despite me being 26 at the time. And also since Katie's stream, I've gone back and reviewed texts from the time. And there was actually a picture where it was shown that they had this 21 plus wristband on one of their one of the one of their wrists. So from my perspective, it's a bunch of 21 plus year olds hanging out. I have no reason to think otherwise. And that's a totally valid point. Now let's move on to my next point. Drinking in a hotel room with others. Now my major issue with this is the fact that Katie makes this out as the people in the hotel room were forcing them to drink when that's not the case. Here, let me go ahead and show you the clip again. There was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking and insisted on drinking games and already drunk. I obviously completely complied. We sat on the couch and answered questions about each other, drinking a bunch. Now, if that was the case, why does George Not Found have evidence of you guys going ahead and making the entire drinking game situation happen and asking for it to happen? This is a blatant lie. And honestly, this is a malicious lie at that too, because not only are you trying to defame George Not Found, you're trying to defame every single other person in that room there as well, as they are complicit if they were trying to force you. Now, here's another problem with that. You also lied about the number of people in that room as well. Now here, let me play those clips from George Not Found's entire video. And actually at this point, I actually had a friend that I had only known online dream message me. I'm bored. Can you come to my room? Let's hang out, essentially. That's what we did. Me and my friend that I just met <laughs> physically. I mean, I knew him online, went up to Dream's room and we were hanging out. And again, the same scenario happens from the night before. They are trying to get him to go out to another party that they were at. and. Same story, Dream didn't want to go, but was open to them coming here. And again, that is what happened. But this time, their friends were actually all able to get in. I don't know how they did it, but Katie, her best friend, and three other of her friends ended up coming to the room, which had me, Dream, and my online friend that I just met. So eight people total in this room at this point. This night was very similar to the one before. We were just hanging out, playing games, drinking, and just having a good time. So something I actually want to point out before I continue with the rest of the story is the way that she phrases some things in her story. Instead of saying that her and the rest of her friends actually wanted to come to the hotel to hang out with us, she said that one friend was invited by Dream, but she didn't want to go alone. So then they decided to go along with her because they were willing to go anywhere. You can see in these screenshots from the text at the time that they were all trying to come to the hotel and it wasn't just a, oh, we're willing to follow her essentially. They were all in the group chat and part of the discussion to go to the hotel. 
I also chose to mention my online friend. It doesn't really add to the story, but she never mentioned him or the eighth person that she brought with. So I'm just saying it because that's how it happened. And I want to make sure the story is straight. Another thing that she talks about is how we insisted that she drinks more and that we insisted on playing drinking games when this isn't the case. Again, they had already been drinking at this party before they arrived to the hotel room. And they had also been the ones that were asking to play the drinking games. So instead of us insisting that we play it, they were actually the ones that were asking us. And you can see that in the screenshots here. They had actually texted multiple times, specifically wanting to play this drinking game that we had played the night before. Now you see that Katie Bug has been lying about the entire thing from how many people were there in that room to who was insisting on the entire drinking games and everything in between that. The screenshots even prove that and George did a fantastic job showing all of those evidences. Moving on to the next point, offering alcohol to an 18 year old. As you can see from the last two points, she lied about her age, she lied about being forced to drink alcohol and do drinking games, and she was the one actively going out and partying and drinking alcohol with her friends. So, in all actuality, anyone who was involved giving her alcohol under the age is not guilty to begin with because she actively lied and tricked people into thinking that she was 21. Playing a phone game in the middle of a drinking game. Now this is where things get problematic due to the fact that both parties are drunk here. Why is that so problematic? It's because of the fact that I cannot trust either narrator here and I have to look at the facts objectively. The reason being their recollection is going to be flawed to begin with. However, one thing is consistent here. Both parties claim that there was inappropriate touching. And this is where my issues start with George here. Since both are basically saying there was inappropriate touching, it does not matter what George thinks here. Look, you have a girl who is drunk. She clearly cannot consent. And this is despicable to say the least. And this is where I have to say, George, you are at fault. You are not innocent in any way shape or form it doesn't matter that she lied about her age and it doesn't matter that you assumed that she was 21 when she was clearly 18 and it doesn't matter that she was doing drinking games with you whether she wanted to or not the fact of the matter that that still happened is the giant issue that we have to tackle here people including friends watch her get touched and didn't say anything now every single point that i have made hinges on this final point here because if you look at my point about her age about how she got into the whole drinking game stuff it doesn't matter in fact the inappropriate touching is the entire question of this entire video and the reason why i was so hard on every single point that katie made is because of the fact that if anyone has to question the legitimacy of any victim's claim you have to look at this like you would any other case and she qualifies for someone who is a victim look victims will never have the best of stories they'll never have all of the evidence right in front of them but when the abuser can also confirm that the victim and them had sexual engagement while they were drunk then yes she's a victim and it doesn't matter what anyone thinks or says here unfortunately george did a very very disgusting and bad thing and she has to go ahead and live with that now for everyone going ahead and blaming dream on this entire situation here i don't think he deserves the blame on this the dude was drunk as well and everyone in that room was drunk notice how i'm not even blaming any of katie's friends as well how could they know what they're looking at when they're drunk as well i can only assume their mental states here because they're all drunk you can't trust a drunk person's entire statement completely sometimes they're not even trusting what they're seeing themselves but that doesn't take away from the point that both even said hey sexual conduct happened the idea of consent has to be given when people are sober when people can think not when they're inebriated and unfortunately that didn't happen so katie is in the right here and honestly speaking george you fucked up my guy and you have to own that so whatever's coming your way man up because dude this is entirely on you if you like what you saw like comment subscribe dislike if you dislike it and practically katie i'm so sorry for everything that's ever happened to you in that moment